Ooh. It's like a rocket launch. It was. <laughs> Get the countdown. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If only if only you knew how not serious our, our YouTube channel was. Yeah, it, isn't it? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it we wouldn't get that. any of that. But no, not a chance. It's fine. So we're back with another. Welcome back. Another. What is it? Um, what are we going to call this? Just us talking shit on us talking, YouTube. Us talking about rubbish, coaching. Yeah. So. Um, what is it? What does I say? I hope loads of people are listening. If you um, are, yeah. and tell I, everybody about. I know it. none of you are, but if you are listening, share it. Yeah. We've share got some. Everyone. We've got something exciting. It's semi exciting, I guess. Sorry, what? Semi exciting or what? Semi. Is it semi? Semi, isn't it? Semi. Unless you're American. Is it semi or semi? Put it in the it's in the comments. Def- well, it's written the same, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> well, it's not potato, though, is it? So It's not, no. Semi, that's why. Um, we've got something exciting-ish. Yeah, depends what you deem as exciting, right? Depends, so yeah. We've just launched... Um, launched. Uh, we've basically decided to open up our, our group, I guess. So... If, if people have kind of watched these and don't necessarily know what we do, so we kind of, at the moment, we are coaching coaches. Um, we are. And that's that's everything kind of online coaching related from their own nutrition and training, if they want it, to some things in terms of how to set their own business up, how to get great client results, etc. cetera. Um, and each week with our one-to-one clients, we, did, we do like a group call where we might do a teach, we might do a Q&A, we may have expert guests in there. Yeah, you know, you know that thing that all of the mentorships, that's the main thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's just a little add-on for yeah. our clients, isn't it? But you, you usually pay a grand for that a month. In, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's usually yeah. a grand um, <laughs> to sit with 200 people on a, on a Zoom call. And get your questions ignored. And get your questions. Yeah, uh, we're gonna, we've opened it up to anybody for 49 quid, <laughs> which is quite a joke. Stupid. Well, stupid idea. It, stupid. You know, it is what it is, isn't it? Guess I whose idea that was? Mine. So, mm-hmm. always, always the best ones. So, we've decided to open it up. So, it's 49 quid. Basically, cancel when you want. No contract, unlike some mentorships. Um, well, 12, no, we definitely will get you on the phone and definitely make you feel like you're a waste of space if you want to quit. 12 months. Grand a month. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, we, we, you can just cancel it Netflix style. Um, but, uh, yeah, we come in. There's a group. Uh, there's a group setting in there uh, where we kind of answer questions. Um, we'll be dropping in trainings every so often um, about certain elements of I don't know how to coach clients, onboarding, social media, whatever that is. Mm. Um, but more importantly, you get access to the the private calls. Um, so yeah, that's forty nine quid. Um, and just to be very very clear, not to downplay it anyway, but it's not coaching. There's not really any accountability. It's just like yeah. you turn up to calls and watch them. But again, for forty nine quid, it's like. It's yeah, we're not gonna sit there and check up on you and ask you for all this sort of stuff. It is literally just a case of ask us some questions. We'll tell you the lies. Um, that's it. Innit? But so. it is about nine hundred and fifty pounds cheaper than what you. Probably the, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. The same also, thing. Same thing. It's the same um, thing. But yeah, no. Our, our sort of exclusive one-to-one coaching, obviously, that our coaches get access to those calls, is um, is different to that. Yeah. By the way, just for anyone. Yeah. But it's still good though. It's still good. It's if still you good. like this, you'll definitely love that. Well, yeah. Because this is the free stuff. Yeah, we'll actually answer your questions. Yeah. Rather than this, we just rant about shit that we like yeah. to talk about. So, so anyway, um, let's uh, let's get into the, the the topic of the of the YouTube video. I guess what, what we're we talking doing? about. What we're doing today? Oh, you forgot? Yeah, 100%. genuinely forgot. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it's about why the laptop lifestyle. Why it's ruining online coaches. There you go. You got no, it. it somewhere, go. somewhere in there. Somewhere in that bold skill. Yeah, it's because I've come off the back of a full day at my desk from seven o'clock this morning doing check-ins. Yeah, it's that's only, why. It's only nine thirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's a big day, mate, for yeah, online yeah. coach. Yeah. About. It is, yeah. <laughs> big day. Um, but yeah, look, I think um, I think a lot of this stems from, um, in my opinion, mentors. I think um, yeah. business mentors will sell because it's the same thing as uh, as what it used to be, isn't it? It used to be um, uh, eat more, um, burn more fat, yeah. and that's a sexy thing to sell. It, it's, that's the thing is it's the tagline, right? It's the sexy thing that people say. And and I I did a post about this on Instagram. I said if if a fitness mentor is telling you to cut down client contact time, cut down the amount you give them, what do you think they're going to do to you when yeah. it comes to inside the mentorship, right? right and it's the same thing, right? It's like that. It's the whole problem with the four-hour work week on this sort of stuff. It's like the people that write those books are in a position where they've done 70-hour work weeks to get to yeah. that point. <laughs> like yeah. there's a, there's a, there's a, they just miss out the gap, don't they, between the like showing you work. like, yeah, the hard work bit so that they can afford to then go four-hour work week. Yeah, so basically, four-hour work week, what I did was I just employed 20 people to do the work for me. <laughs> wow. well, it's, it's, can't it, do that. it's exactly that, though, isn't it? Because yeah. it's like, but, and it's, it's poor business mentoring, in my opinion, to almost get the taglines and be like, okay, well, that sounds appealing. Let's just do that with everybody. And I, I've had clients come to me 
uh, who are coaches, and they've got nine, ten clients, and they've been told to cut down, cut down hours. What? Cut down hours? What, from nine or ten clients? Yeah. That's not many hours. So why are you cutting down? I've actually got a guy who put up a nice post about me this morning, actually. He's, he's, a, he's a month in. How much pay him? Uh, yeah, yeah, what's the bunch? Yeah. Um, he's actually a month in, and we talked about, he kind of, focused on, on the post, what he'd done. And it was all kind of geared around how he's improved client service, how he's improved onboarding so that there's less friction, mm. uh, that he's increased his accountability so that he's almost talking to them on almost a daily basis now in WhatsApp and he's doing a video checking every week, right? He's, he's gained an additional 20 clients this month, right? Because, and he attributes it to all of his clients, or I say all, but the majority of his clients have turned around and they absolutely love it. And they've said, can't believe how much detail you're going into. I can't believe how much um, things have improved. Like, And he's therefore collecting quite a lot of social proof about how good his service now is. Mm -hmm. He's put that out and he's had 20 people come in. Yeah. And, and this is the thing is like, it's it seems that it's a common trend no matter where you're at in your business to be like, work less. No matter where you are, it's like, oh yeah, streamline everything. Make it as easy as possible. Like always leverage your time in any way you can. And I think that some people... Don't what have to anything. work in more though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but some people don't have anything to fill that time. Like I sort of say to them, so what? Are you, what are you trying to achieve by doing? doing this? Like, okay, so you've got a day of check-ins. What are you doing in the six days? Yeah. Like, have you got have you got that much going on in your life that you can afford to do that? Like, or you want to do that? And I think sometimes there's this there's this barrier where people come to us and think, oh, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm on ten clients, or I want to get to this point, and you know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'm sitting there going, I know what you're doing wrong. I can tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. No, I'm not working anywhere near hard enough. So, like the way that I the way that I look at stuff is very kind of black and white in it, and I, I use these kind of like binary things quite a lot. And you've heard me say stuff like this. Oh, just not the microphone, sorry. Um, you've heard me say quite a lot of stuff like this. It's binary, and you go, okay. So, so literally, the question that you're answering is: Do I think I'm going to get um, better client results if I give them more attention or less attention, or more attention? So why wouldn't you do that then? Mm -hmm. If you know you're going to get better client results. And then you ask yourself the question, if I get better client results, do, uh, do I think my business will be better or worse? Or better? Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of this like a flow chart where you've just got two options to go down, literally, you're doing the wrong thing at every turn. Like yeah. if you're cutting your hours down, you're, you're, you're picking the, the, the bad lane to go down. Go down the good lane, which you know that if you get, if you give them more time, they're going to get a better result, which is going to get better attention, which is going to get more referrals, which there then is going to, you're going to have more social proof. So then you're going to be able to attract more clients. And then when you have an abundance of clients, you can then, then start to leverage or scale or whatever you want to do when you've got clients coming out of your ears, but not at fucking 10 clients. Yeah, and it, and it's this whole thing of like people again. They're working in coffee shops. They're doing all these sorts of things, and they wanna they wanna be able to live the lifestyle where they can they can do their check ins anywhere in the world. And that's great, right? I'm all for that, and I think that that's great as long as you're providing the best quality service you can to your client. Like that's the caveat that everyone's missing out on. Everyone's missing that bit. They can't wait to leverage their time. Can't wait to do less work, but they're not providing the service that they should be to their to their clients. And I think for us, like people, we're not very good at this. We're not very good at showing the amount of work we do, right? Maybe we should be better at doing that. But on the days where, on Instagram, for example, we don't really post loads of stories. We tell our clients to post stories regularly. We say to them, look, you should be showing your life, showing what you're doing. I don't do as much of that as I should do because I literally sit at my desk doing client check-ins for a large portion of the day, which isn't very exciting. I try and make it as exciting as possible, but <laughs> showing what I'm eating and drinking, whatever. But the reality is there's not a huge amount going on, but I'm also full with clients. I don't need any more clients. don't want any more clients. And I have to make sure that my time it's protected in that sense so that when I'm doing check-ins, I'm doing my check-ins. If you have 20 clients, you can afford to do a sort of a what I'm doing today style kind of behind the scenes Instagram story because let's be honest, you've got the time to because you've got 20 clients. You can do that in half a day, even do it well as well. People always go, oh, do that in half a day. How do you do it? You, you always talk about service. Well, yeah, because that's all I do. Yeah, I don't dick around yeah. doing other stuff. Because people dick around. They go, oh, I'm watching a YouTube video in between each client check-in. Well, okay, well, you're not working hard enough. People just procrastinate big time. Procrastination is the biggest thing. Like we, we, I'm sure you're the same as me. We do our check-ins. Do, do Not Disturb goes on, put it away. And I'll do five check-ins and then I'll go, right, I'm having a break. I'll have a drink. Literally, it's a drink, a piss, and then I'm back in again. That's the break, not YouTube video and then do whatever else I want to do. And you have to build your life a little bit like that when it comes to online coaching, once you start getting busy. So with our coaches that we work with, I'll, I'll say to them, I'll say, right, when are your checking days? You should be going, if you've got 20 clients, that's one day. 
I don't, wouldn't spread them out. Do them in one day. Get really, really good at being efficient with your time on that day, making sure you can do that. Because I'll tell you what's the easiest thing to do then is to go from 20 clients to 40 clients and not drop your service down. Do you know what? This is probably going to mind blow people that you would go, what, you have a check-in day? Because as daft as this sounds, even though we've always done that, people are not, t- the more I'm seeing, people are not telling their clients when to check in. They're not having... Didn't we have a question in the group the other day about it? Yeah. It was in the members group. It was in yeah. the members thing. It was like, uh, oh, um, yeah, that was it. They just go, oh, my, my clients, um, I can't remember who it was now. There's someone in but there, the, but they, they check in whenever they want is the premise, right? So for, for, for you guys who are obviously online coaches, otherwise you'd be wasting your time watching this. Um, <laughs> yeah. And arguably you are anyway. But um, <laughs> yeah. you should have, if you don't do this, this is, how you, this is how you set things up. You say to your clients, your check-in day is Monday, for example, let's just say. So you have your stuff over to me by close of play Monday, which is your data uploaded, your photos mm. from, from the morning, um, and your, your check-in. Whether it's a video, voice note, whatever it is, whatever you use, at least do this bit right, and it's done Monday. You answer them on the Tuesday. So in theory, if you've got 20 clients that are checking in with you on the Monday, you wake up to 20 completed check-ins from your clients on the Tuesday that you can go bang, 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 bang. And then you have another batch of people who will send all of their check-ins to you on a Tuesday. You then wake up on the Wednesday and reply to all those people. Whereas what seems to be happening is, yeah, I get my clients to kind of check in. And how many people have I seen that are going like, they're almost receiving check-ins and then panicking that they've got to get them back. Like, there's no structure. If you're just allowing your clients to check in willy, willy-nilly, <laughs> if you're um, letting them check in willy-nilly, like, when the, whenever they want, five in the evening on a Tuesday or when it should have been Sunday, and then you feel, you're feel you feeling obliged to, fuck, I've got to film them their feedback or I've got to give them an update. You've set your fucking business up all wrong. You should be structured. You should... Business. The amount of the amount of coaches, right, that I've spoken to, honest, honest to God, and they'll go, I just need a bit of accountability because I feel like I'm getting up on a Monday and I don't really know what I'm doing. What? What, what do you yeah. mean you don't know what you're doing? And, and do you know what the, the weird thing is like with that is it's it's this whole concept of the, the coaches come to them. I don't really seem to get good results from my clients. And it's like, well, and so half the time we talk about this, we talk about service, coaching service and getting good results, right? And some of it comes down to your coaching ability when you do those check-ins. The other half of it comes from boundaries and how you set that up our clients when they send those check-ins i'll tell you what the, the clients get the best results guess which ones they are guess which ones they are the ones that check in every single every single week on time mm-hmm. every single week. they do what's required at the same time the ones that don't are the ones that don't check in on time and i'll text them or chase them up where's your check-in where's your check-in it needs to be done by the end of the day because i'm doing check-ins today it's not there i'm missing it doesn't get done you're running a business here like you always use this example it's like you can't just turn up to a gp's clinic at and you, your appointment's at three o'clock. Oh, t- do you know what? I couldn't make it. I'll come tomorrow instead at three o'clock. No, no other people are booked in there. You can't, you missed your slot. You're running a business. You're, and, and I think the people who want to live their laptop lifestyle and stuff like that, they, like you said, they go on a Monday, go, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing this week. Mm. What do you mean you don't know what you, we know exactly what we're doing every single week. Our check-in days, our business days, our admin days, our content days, our days off. And this is where I think people blur the lines and they just feel like they're always off. Yeah. This is the thing with online coaching is people just want to always be off. Yeah. You can enjoy those off days. I tell you what, the, those off days feel loads better once you've had a full day on of doing all those yeah. check-ins and your clients are fucking smashing it. Like when, they ask yourself, when are you going to be on? Because like, on yeah. isn't like dicking around in coffee shops or whatever. Like If you run your business, if you, co- if you are walking around co- saying I'm a business owner or I have an online business, act like you've got a business. Yeah. Like, because what you currently have is you being sporadic with no structure all over the shop and it looks like a shit show and how like if you're and if it, that's to, how you're to your clients it, yeah, it looks to like your a clients. shit show this is what i say so sometimes i get people late check in and and it's like the first late check in i'm like no I, this needs to be done like, i'll let you off first time but this needs to be done yeah and they'll be like oh like sorry and it, it's kind of like well no like don't just flippantly i've said like if i was all over the place with my check-ins like and that's what you came in to experience. Yeah. You think this guy's all over the fucking shop. Yeah. This checking procedure I have now is exactly why it's so slick. Yeah, and 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 like like you say, it's exactly that. The the coaches are creating an environment where they're letting their clients get away with it because that's what they're doing. They're being slack. They're not getting back on time with people. And I have dedicated days that my clients know when they're going to hear from me. It's as straightforward as that. And my, and again, the clients that get the best results, all that sort of stuff, right? The amount of times I've had a check-in from someone who's getting on to get great results, they check in late and they go, don't worry, I know you're probably going to skip it. 
And they're the ones I don't skip yeah. because actually I'm like, no, do you know what? You usually check in every single week on time. And uh, amount of coaches go, oh, people just don't seem to take it very seriously. Well, wonder yeah. Wonder why. Wonder why your clients aren't taking it seriously. Maybe because you're not taking it seriously. So if they see you dicking around all the time on Instagram, they see you dicking around all the time when they should have been getting their check-in. Like, that's the other thing I find is like, I, it's, it's going to sound a bit stupid, but I'd rather be this way than the other way. I feel like I can't post that I'm playing golf or that I'm enjoying my weekend if every single client of mine hasn't heard from me, whether it is to say, here's your check-in back or where was your check-in? Like I, I, I was looking for it kind of thing to let them know that I'm there. How much of an idiot would you feel if half your clients didn't get a check-in that week or you, or you didn't message them or whatever and you're there off swanning around doing whatever you want? Like, again, it's fine. I, again, I'd rather be the way I am than the other way. But just think about how your how you are on social media and what that says to people if you've not done the work required that week. Like, if you go, oh yeah, don't worry, I'll get your training plan over to you by next week instead I missed this week. We've all done it. We've all missed a training plan here and there. We've all missed the occasional thing. But 99% of the time, it's on time, it's bang on time. And the reason we haven't forgotten it is because it's an anomaly and we've missed it accidentally. But tell you what, the first thing I do when I've realized I've done a training plan that I've missed accidentally, first thing I do, I drop everything and I do it because I'm like, well, I didn't do it when I said I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a dick. But I hear coaches again, I hear clients going, oh, you had to wait two weeks for a new training plan for my coach. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? what? When did you tell them? Oh, three, four weeks ago. And you're like, I don't know how people can then go and enjoy themselves knowing that that work isn't being done. But yeah. like you say, it's because the processes aren't in place for them to go, well, this is what my week looks like. This is who I'm dealing with on these days. Because I know my Tuesday clients, my Wednesday clients, my Thursday clients. I know them, I know their names, I know exactly where they should be. Mm -hmm. And it, I know how they check in, whether it's a, a voice note usually or a video or, or whatever. I know. Mm -hmm. And people don't have these systems and then wonder why people just leave and go, oh, it was a bit shit. Well, so the, how I would phrase this is, um, if you're not acting professional, how do you expect them to see it like a professional business? Mm -hmm. Like, what they should experience is a, a, a good setup. This guy's slick. Being professional on social media, not not necessarily, like you just swear in whatever, your own marketing, whatever. You know, you don't need to be corporate and, and clinical. But your service, we dick mm. around and stuff like that on social media, but your service should be like, no, 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 this is a proper setup here. Like, here's my procedures, here's my check-ins, yeah. here's, the, here's the rules and regulations and the expectations, okay? And people know where they stand, and if you run it like a professional setup, you'll be treated like a professional. If you run it like a little boy from your fucking mum's house, like, you, you are not going to be treated in the same yeah. way because people will just fuck off or people will drop you or nah I'm not paying the, the 30 days notice or whatever because you're yeah. not because you're just seen as someone who's playing at it if you're going to do this for a job and you're going to take over the world and create this business empire do you think you're going to start acting like, like that and you put this into perspective with your own clients even you know this who are your best clients what do they do do they do more or do they do less <laughs> They're the ones who do more, aren't they? They're the ones who hit their calories all the time. They're the ones who can devote a little bit more time to their training or their steps or their cardio. Do they, are they the ones that get the better results? Mm. They are. They are, right? The ones that come in and are doing the bare minimum and you know that it's a fucking stretch for them to get through the weekend without a pizza, those are the ones that don't do so well and the ones that their progress takes ages and then they drop off. But that's what you're doing in your business. Mm. Be the one who works hard. Be the one who ticks all the boxes. Be the one who treats it properly. And your results will come in a much shorter time frame. I think that's, like, you, you hit the nail on the head earlier where it's like, look at, think of that binary thinking. Like every single decision you make within your business, ask yourself that question. Is this more likely to make someone better or less likely? That, ask yourself that question. And that's fine. That's all you have to do, in my opinion, is go, does me doing this make it more likely these people are going to get results or less likely? Because as we know, results are the backbone of this, of this stuff, of this business, right? And that's the thing I want you to take away from this video is ask yourself, when you're doing your work, when you're doing those things, is this going to make it better or worse? Because most people, they want to make their lives better, for, but, but make their clients' lives worse. And I think that, in my opinion, you should be making your clients' lives better before you worry about your own. That's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. From that point, I'm not saying make your life worse all the time, but you have to get to a point where your clients are succeeding, they're getting great results, and then you can start leveraging your time once you've got a business set up. But the amount of people with 10, 15 clients can't get past that number, can't do it, and I'm like, I know why you can't do it. Correct. It's because you've got the work ethic of... A sloth? Sloth, yeah. Do sloths not work very hard? I don't know, they they do sleep a lot, don't they? Yeah, they say koala bear. Yeah, Same thing, isn't it, really? Um, 
but it's that whole thing of like, I just don't understand it. And people leave these corporate jobs and they leave all these jobs because online coaching looks sexier and because you follow people who maybe are online and they're showing that side of, of, their, of their world where they are relaxed, they're not in an office, they're at a beach or whatever. Just know that that is very, very rare. And just know that that's not real life. And much like in the same way, those people at corporate, at CEO level, you might see them taking eight to 12 weeks holiday a year, golfing, enjoying their life and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of like, yeah, they've also done the 20 years graft in the business first. Um, and I think it's a little bit of that that's needed and a little bit of um, bringing down back down to earth a little bit with your own business and go, do you really think running your own business is going to be life on a beach? Do you really think starting from scratch is going to be like that? Ask, you know, ask yourself those questions of those people like Elon Musk, people who run Amazon. And I know that's a bit extreme, but do you really think they did fuck all when they first started? Do you really think they tried to take as many days off as possible when they first started? And you may not want to get to that point, obviously, but this is your business. You should have the same level of pride that they have within your business. Why would you not? And ultimately it comes down to it. it's your name you're dragging through the mud. It's not mine. It's not his. Like, We've it's done not. ourselves. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we do that. We do that ourselves. Don't worry about it. But, but that's also where I think you need to remember is like, it's how do you want to be remembered? How do you want your clients to leave remembering your coaching? How do you, ask yourself that question every time it comes to skipping one or doing something late or not doing something on time. And then ask yourself how it feels when you're on the receiving end of that when it comes to service with other things in other areas of your life. And I think you'll, you'll have the answer that you need there in terms of your coach and your business and, and what you want from it. Um, yeah, there you go. We'll finish there because I think that's... That'll do. That's it, innit? So remember, keep saying the same if you thing, can, <laughs> hit like, was it? Like, subscribe, put it, all share it on your MySpace and all of that jazz, you know, yeah, your Bebo. Yeah, all those things, mate. Um, yeah. Everything. And uh, remember, we've got the, the free group. We've not got a name for it. We call it, like, members. We could call it, like... Is coaching community a bit wanky? Yes, it is. Yeah. The B okay. team, I think. But it's about the B team. Join the B team, yeah. yeah. It's not the A team. It's not, like, not that good. It's better. B team. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's it then, isn't it? See you in a bit. Done.